Today is honestly a day of wins for Behaviour and Dead by Daylight. We've received a lot of really cool updates, starting with the February developer update and also a brand new teaser trailer for the next chapter, which is setting off a lot of theories already on Twitter, which we're going to get into in just a little bit. But first of all, let's have a look at the developer update. So this was obviously released for February. Uh, this is what's coming in the next update. We're getting the PTB, I believe, on Tuesday, uh, the 14th, Valentine's Day. How cute. And we should be able to test out the new chapter and also test out some of these new features that are coming in. So what, what can we see? What are we waiting for? Well, first of all, they've talked about the Red Forest visual update. Now, this is part of the whole Realm Beyond visual update where they're just improving the, the visual aspects and, you know, some of the structure and mechanics of some of the maps as well. They've now tackled Red Forest. I don't imagine there will be a lot of... Huge changes apart from just visual updates, but I guess we'll test that on Tuesday to, to see if there is anything. But pretty cool to see them still continuing with the Realm Beyond and going forward with that. The next thing that they have, if I can scroll down, good lord, is something called a map repeat prevention. Now, this is a really cool concept, which they actually teased on Twitter a while ago. The basics of it is that there will be a kind of counter behind the scenes, which will analyze how many times you go into certain maps. And if you, for example, play a game on Fractured Cowshed, in your next game, as long as there are no map offerings, you will not play Fractured Cowshed, which is a Cold Wind map, in case you're unaware. And it will, it will instead send you to a different map, which is really cool if you think about it, because I think one thing that gets really annoying in Dead by Daylight is playing the same map over and over again. It is a shame that this won't block map offerings, but I guess... I don't know how they would do that. I've said for a while that I would really like some sort of offering that blocks specific maps. Obviously, we have Sacrificial Ward, which blocks any map offering. But it would be really cool to have something like, oh, I don't want to go to Coldwind specifically. I don't want to go to Macmillan specifically. Let's say if you're playing, uh, I don't know, a specific killer who, who doesn't operate while around pallets. It would be really cool to be able to block the game so that you don't have to be held back by that. You know, that kind of stuff. Or if you go into Scratch Mirror, you, you don't get taken to Cold Wind. You know, Scratch Mirror Myers doesn't get taken to Cold Wind. You're going to have a better time overall. That's not part of this map prevention, but it is still cool to see them taking steps to try and stop us going into the same maps constantly and just bringing a bit of variety into, into the games that we play. The next thing is about bots. Now, bots came out last year, and they were one of the coolest things to come out last year, I think. I was a big, big fan of them. I think it's a really cool thing to help new people get into new killers and to be able to experiment and play a killer or maybe even just play a certain build without having the pressure of an online game getting in the way of them truly experiencing the, the, the feeling of playing that killer and learning that killer. And basically, this is just a bunch of improvements. One of the major improvements that they've got is that you can now customize a survivor's bot loadout. So if you want to see what it's like going up against, let's say, the meta, you know, Adrenaline, Dead Hard, all that kind of stuff, you can actually customize the bots to bring in those specific perks rather than just coming in perkless, which is what they do at the moment. That's really cool and should mean that there is a lot more spice in, in going up against these bots. You can probably test a lot more. Uh, they might even be harder to go up against, which I think is what's going to happen over time as they improve the coding of the bots and improve how they interact, which is a couple of things they mentioned as well. So like improved navigations, they will now actively seek out totems they will react to some audio cues like the race bell these are all really cool stuff just to improve how the bots react in matches there's nothing in here about killer bots unfortunately but hopefully we'll see that in a year or two but right now it's only survivor bots but at least they're improving on them and still working on that concept the next thing is about perk changes now there is going to be one perk in particular which you've already seen on the screen which everyone's going to be talking about and that is of course eruption now eruption is something everybody's been talking about if you haven't seen the discourse on eruption then you're probably not on twitter <laughs> but basically everyone's been mad at eruption the idea that you get incapacitated while you're working on a gen that a killer is kicked when they down somebody and you can do basically nothing for 25 seconds eruption and dead hard have been you know two sides of the same coin in a lot of the conversations and now they've 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 listened the uh, behavior have listened they've made changes and what they're going to be doing is changing it so now instead of causing the gen to lose 10 percent of the total progress when it blows up it will now lose 10 percent of its current progress i think this is similar to pop goes the weasel so if you have a generator that say five percent done you'll lose 10 percent of five percent but if you have a generator that's 90 percent done you'll you, you'll lose 10 percent of 90 percent this obviously makes it towards the end of the match a lot more 
of a perk that will come in clutch, but at the start of the match, it shouldn't have too much effect. But the big change, the big, big, big change that I'm sure everybody on the survivor side is, is, is celebrating and everybody on the killer side is crying about is that eruption will no longer apply the incapacitated effect to survivors. Instead, the survivor who's working on the generator will scream and reveal their aura for 10 seconds. I believe this is kind of like pain res, scourge hook pain res. It's cool, I guess. I'm not the biggest fan of that change. I understood why they've changed it, but I had an idea that you could change the incapacitated effect to only be uh, an effect on generators. So if, you, if you're incapacitated, you just can't work on generators, but you can do other things um, in the meantime, like cleanse totems or heal or, or do all that kind of stuff. I thought that would have been a better change, which basically makes it so that it's still a really good gen perk for killers, but it means that survivors aren't just completely useless. But We'll see how this works. This could be a really good change. I honestly imagine that eruption wouldn't be used as much now. I don't I don't know. I could be completely wrong in that, but I think a large reason as to why killers were using eruption was because of the incapacitated effect. The ability to literally take a survivor out of the game for like 25 seconds whilst not even chasing them, not even hooking them or anything was was a really really big thing, especially when when survivors are just pounding gens. So I don't know how killers are going to respond to that, but we'll see in the coming update. The other perk that they've changed is any means necessary. Uh, weirdly, I guess I don't know why they've why they've gone for this one, but basically what they're what they're doing is making it so that there's no cooldown. So if you've got two pallets right next to each other, you can pick both of those up at the same time. Um, and they've done this because originally they thought this perk would be too strong, but now they've realised that it's actually kind of hard to find pallets that you know killers don't just automatically break. Which, which is true. A killer will break a pallet more times than they'll leave it unless they've got a killer that can that can like move over the loop and doesn't really need to break the pallet in, in a chase scenario. But they've removed the cooldown. Uh, I don't know how that's going to affect the perk. I don't know if it will make it more used. Time will tell with that one. Now, the next thing is something which I'm really excited about. And honestly, I've got to give major props to Behavior for listening to the community so much with this. It's the new outfit plans. Basically... They've improved their, their production team for outfits. I think they've basically said um, that they've expanded their production capacity to increase the number of cosmetics that we can produce for each update. Now, they've taken specific attention and specific note to mention Hadi. Obviously, Hadi has been in major discourse recently on, on Twitter and in the community because Hadi doesn't get a lot of love. And she hasn't received many outfits, if any outfits, since her release with the Dredge last year. So they've actually made a specific mention of Hadi with some new outfits that she'll be getting over the coming updates, which I think is really cool. Now, I, I don't play Hadi, I'm an LED main, but it's really cool to see the devs listening to the community, understanding what they're saying, and actually taking action on it. And, and that, that goes for Eruption as well. You know, Eruption has been a massive topic of conversation, and this just shows that Behaviour are really paying attention to us. And it doesn't matter what you think of the, the updates and the releases and all of that kind of stuff. Honestly, I think it's just a bigger win to know that they are listening to us, they are paying attention, and they are actively making adjustments, changes, improvements, based on the feedback we're giving. That's really cool. And I, I just take that as a massive win from, from this update. They do also give a brief update on cheating. Um, so they've continued to detect and patch out various cheats since our last update. And they've also expanded the team. We've welcomed a new team lead to our growing security team who will help coordinate our efforts moving forward. So that's pretty cool. Again, just keeping us updated with cheating and making sure that we know that they are still working on making it as rare as possible to see a cheater or a hacker in game. Now that does it for the dev update. It's quite a short dev update overall, but I think there's a lot of really cool stuff in here uh, for, for the community and for the game that I'm excited to see. I'm excited to play on, on Tuesday. But the coolest thing today that was released by Dev by Daylight is of course, the brand new teaser for the next chapter. And we're just gonna have a look at it. It's all, I've already seen this, I already know what to expect. But for those of you who haven't, check it out. a bit loud, sorry. <laughs> Tools of Torment. Now, the immediate, immediate thing that everybody was saying off the back of this was... <gasps> 
We're getting Terminator. Everybody now thinks we're getting Terminator. Do I personally think we're getting Terminator? I can't lie, no I don't. I feel like if we were getting a Terminator IP, such a huge IP in Dead by Daylight, we would have re we would have heard about it, okay? We would have heard hype much, like many, many months ago, okay? Much sooner than, than uh, less than a week before it's released. I think personally that this is an original chapter. I think this is an original killer, an original survivor I believe we're getting. And I think it is gonna be a robot android type killer, which is really cool. It's something that we don't have in the game at the moment and will open up hopefully a whole new avenue of play styles and, and, and themes and all this kind of stuff, which I'm really excited about seeing. Some people have theorized that if we go back to, uh, to the trailer, and we look at, at this part here, this idea of, of all these wires and this, it kind of gives the vibe of like saw, right? Like this idea of creating traps, building something. Some people have theorized that this is going to be a trap based killer, maybe with something like, like a bomb or, or something like that, something, some sort of mechanical trap that they can leave around the trial, uh, which, which is really cool. I've also seen someone notice here, uh, the name looks like it says Adriana. Apparently that was the Jane Romero show on Twitter who saw that possibly indicating that we're going to get a female killer or a female survivor. Uh, I would probably be more inclined to say it's a female survivor because I feel like if we have a female killer who works with traps in this kind of theme, it might be too similar to the pig, maybe, but who knows? It could be completely different. Obviously, if it's an android type killer, it would be completely different. But overall, a really, really cool little teaser, and we are bound to find out more apparently on February 15th, which actually now I think about it, the PTB wouldn't be on the 14th then, would it? Hmm. Maybe I'll look into that. Well, either way, I am going to be streaming on Tuesday, hopefully as part of a PTB, but who knows. But definitely as part of the Love for Hattie Week, just a little, little bit of a promotion for that. If you haven't seen it, there are a lot of creators who are going to be joining forces, playing as Hattie solely for the week and some of them for the whole month of February as well to increase the play rate of Hattie. I'm going to be taking part on Tuesday um, with some awesome creators. I'll leave a link in the description to my Twitch if you want to go and follow that ahead of Tuesday, uh, starting at I believe 6 p.m. BST. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys there and hopefully it will be a PTB and we'll get to see a little bit more of the new killer. But what do you think of this trailer? Do you think we're getting Terminator or is it a brand new original killer who just has a similar vibe? Let me know in the comments what you think. Also, let me know what you think of the whole dev update. I'm excited to hear what people think about this whole thing and hopefully we'll have some more answers soon and I'll give you an update when we do. But thank you so much for watching. Go out there and be the best damn crunk so you can be. I did this all in one take, I think, which is pretty cool. So mad props to me for doing that. But for now, uh, have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye for now. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up, I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you.